Hi, this is Chris Wagner at Chris BI. Today we're going to be going over Alice Drummond's five design tips for Power BI. Let's get to it. All right, Alice has an excellent video out on Discover EI that walks through and provides a good amount of detail around each of these five design tips. If you take the time to add these five design tips into your Power BI dashboard, you're going to have you're going to create a great experience for your users. Some of these things can be a little tricky. For those things, I'm going to leave it to Alice to explain those. She does an excellent job of that. I'm going to run through though with you how we how we make these things happen. Here we go. All right, these are the five design tips that we're going to be working on. We're going to be working on adding in images, simpli simplifying our visuals, select, making sure that we have the right visuals for the job, that we have a good layout, and that we have context to help our users. All right, so let's pull up Power BI and let's go ahead and make this happen. All right, so. Because I'm starting from scratch, I'm going to be starting with Alice's tip number four. So I'm going to be doing these things a little bit out of order. So tip number four is use, using a layout. This is something that is considered a best practice. Uh, Chris Hamill is the first person that I saw do it. The guys over on Power BI Tip do these things all the time as well. They call them scrims. They actually have a really interesting reason for that. I would check those out. But I'm going to use the backgrounds that I've created for the Power BI seed file that's available. So I'm going to go into my Power BI desktop. I launched that. I already am for this example, like all the examples that I do, I'm using the, the Kratos BI Power BI data set. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up on my blank page. I'm going to go to my, my formatting tab over here. I'm going to go to my page background. I'm going to click on add an image and I'm going to add this background that I have. I've already created. Again, these backgrounds are available for you to download and use. These were created just created inside of PowerPoint and then made an image out of them. So really easy to start using. Now, I'm going to create some KPI cards to run up across the top. A trend visual here, a scatter chart here, and uh, a grid of details I'm gonna put on the side here, right? So that I, I have a, a nice laid out layout for my uh, my Power BI visuals, and it's not too cluttered. It keeps things really easy to use. So I'm going to go ahead and add those in. Now, some of the tips when you're building in Power BI is uh, take the time to get everything looking right for a, especially on something like a KPI card right here. If I can make this guy look right. I know that I, I can easily recreate this so that it looks right for all of the visuals I'm using. So in this case, I want to use uh, white text for uh, for the data. I'm going to set my text size to a 10. Come on now. Right? I don't want to have a border on this one, so I'm going to turn my border off. And now I'm going to copy it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paste it for each of the KPI visuals I'm going to want to have on there. One too many. I'm going to select these by holding down control. I'm going to take the time to format them, distribute horizontally. And now one by one, I'm going to replace them with the measures that I actually want to be displaying in here. So uh, by doing this, I can easily, I can ensure that everything is formatted the same and that all of my visuals look the way I'd like them to. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to start adding in my timeline slicer here. So I'm just going to, to ensure that I get everything kind of laid out and set up the way I want down here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in placeholders for each visual to make sure that this kind of has a good look and feel the way I want it to. This is looking pretty good. And I, I can feel pretty confident that this is, looks right. Now all I have to do is go in and add in the values that I want. So 
when, when looking at a trend, I'm going to be uh, looking at my sales amount and I'm going to want to look at that over a period of time. So I'm going to add my sales amount into my values and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my fiscal year and I'm going to add that into my, nope, not my legend, into my access. When I move on to Scatterplot, Scatterplot's going to want me to look at a couple of different things. I'm going to be needing to define the X and the Y axis with different measures. So I'm going to, I'm going to stay inside my factory seller sales to come up with those two measures. Now, when you're looking at, at, at sales, the biggest questions that people have are going to be around the size so we're going to put that on the primary axis and then we're going to talk about our uh, order or yeah order quantity as the, the y axis now so we are going to also quantify the total sales amount as the size or the co product cost now when you see this you're like hey why don't i have any values that show up in here the scatter plot is really good for showing you different breakouts and, and categories. So I'm going to go into English subcategory and I'm going to put that into my date field. And for my product category, I'm going to go and add that into my legend. So I can clearly see the difference between my accessories, my bikes, my clothing and my components, right? If I select on any one of these, we can really hone in on the values, right? And be able to clearly see what's working, what's not, where our highest costs and, 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 and sales amounts are. We can see that all inside my dashboard and we can see everything is interacting. All right, so in this, when we, we move over to the matrix, I'm gonna focus in on the sales amount that we have and then let's go ahead and break this out by english product category and english subcategory and then visualize this over the course of years so let's go back up to fiscal years add that in as my column and then give a default drill down this ensures that we can drill in and see each of these values between accessories bikes uh, clothing and then you know what, for, for fun, we're just gonna pull in the, the product name, but we're not gonna drill down. This would enable your users to be able to go in and um, go in and add additional details or, or explore additionally to see what's going on inside here. So we've gone through and we've been able to add in uh, simplified visuals to ensure that nothing's distracting. We've used a layout to ensure that we have a good structure that inside of here. And we've got the right visual depending upon what it is we're trying to show. One of the things we could also do is we could go in and add in some visual images for accessories and bikes and components to kind of make this easier. We don't have any visuals like that readily available, so we're gonna skip over that one. But a good thing that Alice brings out here is adding context to help uh, to help use in, users interpret and navigate. So let's go ahead and on this one, we're gonna call this guy our homepage. And we're gonna add in a tool tip. If you've not done a tool tip before, these are special pages inside of Power BI that allows you to, to drill in or hover over something. And the idea being, you know, we're gonna use the tool tip on these visuals so we can see some trend information for a given visual to, so we can visually understand what's happening with that. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm going to talk about page size. I'm not gonna leave it at 16 by 19. I'm gonna set up to the custom tool tip. All right, this makes it really easy for me to understand what I can and cannot put inside of here, format wise and visually wise, So, or visually speaking. So I'm gonna go add in a reseller sales amount. So this is my perform 
this is my tooltip page, so I'm gonna hide this page. I'm gonna go over to here and I'm gonna set my custom tooltip. Aww. I'm gonna turn the tooltip on. And instead of it being the report page, I'm gonna, or I'm gonna say a report page, I'm gonna call it the product performance page. Right, now that I have this piece set, Now that I have this piece set, I should be able to hover over this, and I can now see the performance for any of my charts, kind of based upon each of the breakouts. So I can get a good understanding of what's happening performance-wise inside my custom visual. All right, so, so now we've been through Alice's five design tips, showing you how you could do that inside of Power BI fairly easily. Uh, we'd like to thank Alice for putting these together, make, making this work, or making this fairly easy for us to do. Um, we'll be back again next week with some more data gods and uh, some other tips inside of Power BI. Thanks very much. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Hang on. You want some more? That's a great idea. Let's do some more stuff. You want us to do more at kratosbi.com? Support us by going out to the website, hit on buy, buy me a coffee, and uh, I will send off one or two potentially of these really great I Love Power BI stickers, inclusive of this magic hologram one. Uh, it's very, very cool. And for those of you who've been sending in the the buy me five coffees that fifteen dollars hey big shout out thank you guys very much really appreciate that we're actually adding in some some upgraded merch that or thank you merch that we sent off and that's right it is a your own very own data god magnet Ooh, is it focusing come on autofocus um we've got these so uh, there are a handful of you that have gotten these already, um, but if you're interested in getting these stickers or even one of the big magnets, uh, go out on KratosBI.com, buy me a coffee. Thank you guys very much. We'll see you later. Bye.